So what exactly is Everesting and when did it become a thing? You pick a hill climb anywhere in the world, you do repeats on it until you reach an elevation gain of 29,029 feet. This is the equivalent elevation of the highest peak in the world, Mount Everest. Sims. There's a list of rules on the Everesting website, but in a nutshell, you need to complete your challenge in one ride, you're allowed to take breaks, but you can't sleep, and it must be 100% human powered, meaning no e-bikes. All right, we are off. Official start, I think, is 1.12 a.m. Here we go. Trail Creek Road, Sawtooth National Forest. Zillion stars in the sky right now. It's about 27 degrees out. Good little warm up on the pavement. And the real climbing is about to ensue. I've got five or six laps in the dark. I won't bore you with that. So hopefully right now, I'll just snap my fingers and we'll pick up, hit the day laps with an update. Snap! <laughs> The first Everesting recorded was completed by George Mallory in 1994. Mallory rode his bike up and down Mount Donna Huang eight times. It's about a 3,500 foot climb, which is located 50 miles outside of Melbourne, Australia. He was cross training getting ready for his ascent of Mount Everest that year. It's kind of confusing because George Mallory is the grandson of the mountaineering legend, George Herbert Lee Mallory, who attempted a first ascent on Mount Everest in 1924. Him and his partner died and they recently found their remains in 1999. It's still unsure if he actually summited before or after he died, and that's a whole other story. Cut to 2014, a guy named Andy Van Bergen got together as posse of cycling masochists called the Hells 500. They led the first Everesting where 40 people officially finished the feat. Since then, Andy trademarked the term Everesting, formalized some rules, made an official website, and now you can submit your rides and gain entry to the Everesting Hall of Fame, and here we are. All right. So some time has gone by. I'm about halfway up my eighth lap. The sunset lap was ridiculous. So cold though. So I didn't want to pull out the camera. Anyway, this is a butt kicker for sure. I've climbed, I don't know, somewhere around a little over 10,000 feet, 10,500. Been on the bike for just over seven hours now putting in work all right <laughs> I don't know what else to say man look at these views though I don't know. I'm getting a little delirious I'm trying to stick on my nutrition plan feeling pretty good legs are tired but uh, nothing too crazy par for the course sticking to my mantras staying positive keeping a positive mental attitude Anytime something negative comes up, whoosh, knock that right out of the head. Replace it with something positive. All right, catch up with you soon. Oh, turn this thing off. My fingers are numb. Oh, come on, I can't even press the. Why would I or anybody else for that matter want to put themselves through this kind of torture? Good question. I'm not a wafy pro cyclist rocking a 17 pound road bike. I don't wear skin suits. I don't use power meters. I'm too chicken to ride my bike 60 miles an hour down a pavement descent. I'm definitely not doing this to break any records. I'm just an average Joe husband, father of two, who loves to ride my bike and loves to stretch my own limits. So what did I use for motivation? I read this great article in Pink Bike a few months back about two regular mountain bikers that Everest did the Skyline Bike Park in Queenstown, New Zealand. They did it on their everyday full suspension mountain bikes and this spoke to me. That's when I made the decision in my mind. I knew I could do this and I would do it.
sure don't suck! Drunk and delirious. I've been waiting for you guys. You're the, you're the carrot that's been dangling just to see you guys. Where's the dangler? Oh my god, thank god you're here. Give me a hug. Hey, it's banana. I got a banana. Is that a banana in your pocket? <laughs> you just <laughs> Oh, I love you, squirrely. I love you. Oh, dude. Then there's this jersey I'm wearing. Jersey Mike! Let's rewind a sec. In 2011, I did an event near my home in Mammoth Lakes, California. It doesn't exist anymore, but at the time, the Everest Challenge was a USA Cycling sanctioned road race that was considered the state climbing championship for California and Nevada. The format was a two-day stage race, which gained 29,000 feet over six gorgeous climbs and 208 miles of riding. At the time, nobody had completed it on a single speed or a mountain bike, so I gave it a whirl. To this day, it's one of my toughest and proudest achievements on a bike. When I finished, the race director gave me a handshake and this jersey is a token of my accomplishment and I've been proud of it ever since. It's been sitting in my closet as a souvenir and I've never had the audacity to wear it out. So during my ride, I wore this and I harnessed all that energy and motivation from back in 2011 and it helped push me up the hill. Hokey dokey, I'm in the middle of lap 12 now. I don't know. I'm polishing off a piece of PB&J. This climb is 4.1 miles with a little over 1,400 feet of climbing. Uh, so each time I do it, it's an 8.2 mile out and back. I've ridden right around 93 miles now and right around 16,000 feet of climbing. I spent all of lap 11 getting pulled up the hill by Rebecca Rush. It's pretty awesome. We just chatted the whole way and the lap kind of just flew by. Um, but it was great talking to her about her dad and about how Memorial Day is so special to her. The weather's warmed up a little. Thank goodness. It was freezing. Now the sun's... Hey! <laughs> There's my family. I feel like I'm in a groove. I'm going slow and steady. So far, the legs aren't screaming at me too hard. Moving forward. Not taking too many breaks. I was planning on Everesting a different climb a few weeks earlier, but it was still covered in snow, so I had to put it off. Then I heard about Rebecca Rush's Giddy Up Challenge. Cyclists all over the world would be Everesting on Memorial Day weekend as part of a COVID fundraising effort, so I jumped in on it. It felt great to become part of a bigger cause. I got to raise money for COVID relief. It was a great way to say thanks to all the men and women soldiers that have paid the ultimate sacrifice for the freedom we have in this country. If I would have done my other climb, it would have been a reclusive individual time trial. This felt more like a grand apart and just seeing other people People's faces and having people cheer you on is such a huge morale boost. He'll be coming around the mountain when he comes. <laughs> Here I go again on my own. <laughs> What's your name, brother? I'm Chris. Chris Allen. Good to meet you, my man. It's a beautiful day to ride a bike. I'll tell you that much. 12 in the can. Starting up 13. Ooh. Switch out my bottle. <sighs> the refreshing. <sighs> okay. We got this, man. We got this. You got it! You can do it all night! These are my girlies. They came! They made it! They made it! <laughs> yes! It's like, woohoo! I have a, I have a new energy. You got now. a rainbow team. I have a new energy. Look at that. I love you, Miles. Love you, Liz. See you at the top. There he goes. <sighs> My legs are starting to yell at me. I've been trying not to pay attention to him. Anyway, I got Dale Carnegie here, 
reminding me how my handlebars, desire backed by faith, knows no such word as impossible. Richard Makowitz down here under the pedal damn it sign, not dead, can't quit. And I'm taking that to heart. I'm gonna ride today as long and as hard as I can. And unless I die, I'm not quitting this. I will push. I'll do what it takes, I'll rest, kick my legs up. I don't care how long it takes, but I will accomplish this challenge. Mark my words. I've got my other mantras, duct tape on the side of my truck. I hope the duct tape comes off or Angela's gonna kill me. Every time I ride by my pits, I give a look-see, get a little motivation, say hi to my grandpa, whose picture's on the tailgate, watching over us right now. This is Memorial Weekend, and I'm throwing respect to my grandpa. Normally I would do it on Veterans Day because he actually survived World War II, made it through D-Day and Battle of the Bulge. So now for my ritual, I'm at the summit, turn my suspension on to full squish. Chunk, chunk. And my turnaround point at the gate. I love you guys. I love you guys. Oh my gosh. This is beautiful Trail Creek Road. Lap 18 of my Everest challenge, giddy up challenge. Uh, I've gone about 100, <coughs> excuse me, I've gone about 143 miles and uh, a little over 24,000 feet of climbing so far. Whew. I need to really pay close attention to my nutrition and hydration, but I'm starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. A couple more laps. All right. Can you see some of these views? All right, I gotta put this away. I need every ounce of energy I can to control the bike. It's gonna be dark pretty soon. So I figure I'll do one last check-in. I am on lap 20. This is my last full lap necessary. I'm currently just over 27,000 feet of climbing. It's 8.45 p.m. I started at 1.12 a.m. I'm pretty, pretty toasted. I'm, I'm on fumes right now. Oh boy. Hardest single day in a bike saddle I've ever had. Whew. Wouldn't change it. Oh my gosh. On my last descent, I chased after an elk for a mile. I was going 30 miles an hour down the hill and the elk was just in front of me running and I followed him for a mile before he finally I followed him for a mile before he finally jumped off the trail so all right I gotta get back I need both arms I finished with a cruiser lap at last light with my buddy Eric, so I didn't even bother busting out the camera. It was a great way to cap off the day. That's it for my Everesting adventure. All in all, it took me 21 hours and 13 minutes. I'm super stoked to check that one off the list. Today I'm heading to Boise, Idaho. I've got the Smoke and Fire 420 race. Sonny is in the back of the truck. Whew, I can't believe it, dude. My head's all over the place. Okay, I left the house, got about a block away, realized I forgot a toothbrush. Went back, grabbed the toothbrush. Then I got about five blocks away from the house and realized I forgot my shoes. That would have been pretty bad. I ride clipless. Anyway, I've got my shoes, I've got my toothbrush, and now we're really out of here, I think. I just ate a full bowl of Panda Express. What is this ride I'm doing? This is called the Smoke and Fire 420. It's a 420 mile bike race with, depending on who you ask, 35 to 47,000 feet of climbing. I'm a little nervous. I've got the pregame jitters. I'm gonna load some food in the bike. I'm gonna get to bed early tonight and rise and shine tomorrow at 5.30. We're gone. All right, here we go. See you guys. 5.30, let's go. Have fun! Woo hoo! <laughs> I'm spent. All right, here we are. I'm about an hour and a half in. The sun just rose. I think I'm at a place called Bonneville Point. Pretty beautiful up here. Every hour I'm trying to eat some food. 
at 6.30, I ate a banana. What else? Just been sipping a little bit of water. Feeling good, spirits are high. Still super early on. That's Aaron up ahead of me. We started at the same time. This year, because of COVID, the Grand Depart was staggered. So I have a 5.30 a.m. start time, but people are leaving between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. Love these coconut chocolate Luna bars. I'm climbing up Black's Creek Road. Uh, I just got passed by somebody who started at 6 a.m. I think the guy, his name is Nate. He smiled and said hi, but he was going so fast. We didn't really exchange pleasantries. I don't know, look like he just had a frame bag and a little camelback backpack. That had to be him because he's doing sub two days. I don't think he's sleeping. One of my mantras for bike packing races like this is my race, my pace. Don't get caught up in the mix. Tracking dots, just getting your own rhythm. What's going on, brother? Just living the dream. Oh, you got the tunes going. Oh, yeah. Dude. <laughs> you to do this without some music? Crazy. Right on, dude. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit. What's your name? Luke. Luke Allen. Yeah, good to meet you, brother. So that was Luke. He was jamming out to some tunes. I saw flip-flops on his bag. So he's got the right idea. That's what I love about these bikepacking events. Everyone's just living their own dream. You got uh, Quadzilla, or Quads of Navarone, Nate Ginson, who flew by us just a little bit ago, living his dream of going super fast. Then you got Luke, just cruising to his tunes. And then you got me. Roaring. My goal for this ride going in is sub three days. I'm traveling lighter than I ever have with the intent of pushing myself a little harder than I have in the past, testing myself a little more, but still enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. So kind of in between Luke and Nate. Living the dream, meeting cool people, smiles for miles. I'm practicing the smile test on every person I come across. Just keep those spirits high. God, it's beautiful. All right. 26 miles in, we are reaching the sun. Oh, it's glorious, glorious. Maybe a little descending too. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got to switch out to sunglasses. Oh, 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 yeah, get some. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Okay, Ellen, you're alive. Something cracked. We don't know what it is. Ooh, on my right arm. In a little bit of pain. I flipped and flopped. That's probably one of the first crashes I've ever had. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's totally torqued. Okay, now I see some stuff. We just check out this view for a minute, man. Okay, that took most of the brunt. All right, we're, we're going easy from now on. Dude, I can't believe I'm in one piece after that. I got some pain in my arm. Here comes some other people rolling by. Good man, have a good one. Dude, I've got sand in my crotch. Well, that was certainly unexpected. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but after watching the footage, it was definitely worse than it appears on camera. I was going about 20 to 25 miles an hour and my front wheel just washed out. I destroyed a mini tripod for my GoPro and I cracked off a piece of my aero bars, but luckily they held up for the rest of the race. I didn't know it at the time, but the crash also turned my wind vest into Swiss cheese. As far as my body goes, I had a badly bruised hip and forearm, which nagged me for the rest of the ride, especially when I tried to sleep on my side or get comfy in my aero bars. But the bike still worked and I still worked. So what else was there to do but pedal on? I had one more issue about the bike that I didn't know quite yet. We'll get into that soon. Yeah, buddy. You're an absolute beast. What's happening? <laughs> We're out here climbing. This is my homie Andre. What's up, man? Just pimping this climb. <laughs> I don't even know where we are. Kind of going up the pine. What's up, 
<laughs> going just, just up. Just trying to get used to this because this is this is my life for the next few days, climbing and climbing. But saying hey to a few folks, you know that's cool. Yeah. Woo. Kicking butt. I'm just What's excited. What's up, to... We got more friends. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Good work, single speed. Awesome. <laughs> She's been crushing it too. All these crushers out here motivating me. What else would you want to be doing on a Wednesday morning? Seriously. But climbing hills. We already rode under the stars for several hours. Yeah, right? All right, well, thanks for slow rolling with me, man. That's cool. Oh, man. Super enjoyable. I just like to meet people. That's part of my thing. Meeting people and catching the stoke. I met Andre and slowed down to chat with him while we rode up a tough hill for about 45 minutes. His stories were fascinating and I couldn't believe that he was grinding a 40 tooth chain ring in the front and a 50 tooth grinding gear in the back. That's steeper gearing than I'm using with my legs and he's grinding it out with just the power of his arms. But it wasn't until after the ride when I googled him that I had my mind blown. Andre was hit by a subway train in Prague, slept in a coma for three weeks, and woke up with no legs as a double AK amputee. He's the first and only hand cyclist ever to complete the 3100 mile race across America. He won the Ironman World Champs in Kona, and he just finished riding across South America with an equally inspirational group of challenged athletes. I put some links in the description below, so check him out. Now I'm heading into Prairie Town. I've been riding just over four hours now, just living the dream, looking at this beauty. And the road ahead is just priceless, guys. Thanks for hanging with me. Smiles for miles is my mantra for this ride. Everyone I meet just makes me smile and motivates. Such good people out here. Back to the burrito. There's some dirt in it from when I crashed. Extra flavor, protein. Oh, yes. So I just had to say I'm riding. And I'm passing this group of guys sitting over to the side of the road. And as I'm going by, they're like, dirty teeth, dirty teeth, is that you? I'm like, what, what's going on? Turns out it's a whole bunch of guys with the Challenged Athletes Foundation that were with Andre, who I was riding with earlier. Anyway, to get prepared for this ride, they watched a bunch of my Tour Divide prep videos and said that uh, it helped them immensely and wow you know how that makes me feel that these dudes that are so motivating to me I somehow in a little way helped them um, anyway I just had to say that because I'm so fired up on it that maybe these little videos actually do something I'm about to get dusted by this car <laughs> check out those little switchbacks I just came up just the too. ice cream and the sticker and is there like a spigot or something I could fill water bottle? Right there in the right corner. Oh, awesome. Oh, uh, thank you so much. No, thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Got a fat boy ice cream and a Nitz Pine Store sticker. Drop one in you. Group two in you. Group, group. Look at that beautiful river behind me. Some people down there fishing. I'm a little, probably about 92, 93 miles in. It's 1.23 in the afternoon. Still smiles for miles. So yeah, I've just been cruising by myself. Just thinking about how blessed I am to be out here and have this opportunity. It is kind of smoky from the grouse fire that's near here, uh, but not too bad, thankfully. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but it's getting really smoky in here. I can taste it and feel it. Smell it. Hope we get through this section quick. Ah, some other bikes. Boom. Smoky Bob. Go down today? Yeah, you, can you tell? Yeah, just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I took a digger, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any drumsticks? Yeah. Oh, killer. <laughs> I'll take a drumstick and a Coke and a pickle and a Gatorade. And it's okay if uh, in a couple minutes I Fill up my water bottles. Yes. Thank you. So what time do you leave? Uh, 5.30. You're whistling right along. No, I want you to have some of this because I can't eat them all. I hate to throw them away. What's your name? Sorry. I'm Cynthia. Cynthia? Clint. Cynthia and Clint. Yeah. Right on. My name's Alan. Good to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. All right, back to the grind. Now we're getting ready to go up and over Dollar Hyde Summit. It's a 3,000 foot climb that drops us into Ketchum. Ride my pace, my race, still smiling, meeting great people, 
Living the dream. How could you not? Look at this glory. Look at this majesty. It's 338 and I'm on, let me check it here, route mile 112. And I've done 9,000, a little over 9,000 feet of climbing on the day. Last switch back to the top of Dollar High. I've been feeling pretty good up this climb. I just have it in my second to granny gear, set it and forget it, and just took it nice and easy all the way up this climb. Try not to burn all my candles. From here, it's like a 20 something mile descent into Ketchum where I'll resupply and hopefully hit town early enough to grab a burger. Nothing like the feeling of reaching the summit after a long, grueling exertion. How's it going? Trail magic and well wishes. Whoa, that's you doing some trail magic? Oh, brother, I'll take it. All right. Thank you, what's your name? My name's Anthony. Anthony, thanks, brother. I'm, I'm Alan. I really appreciate Alan? it. Yeah. Dollar okay. Hyde Summit. <sighs> Eating some trail butter that Anthony hooked me up with some trail magic. And now we're getting ready to go down there. That's Ketchum. All right, Mr. Anthony. It's an amazing thing you're doing here for everybody, just hanging out, spreading some stoke. So here we go. Get busy living or get busy dying. Oh yeah, going a little too fast here. <laughs> I do not want to crash again. Take it nice and easy. All right, it's 7-11. So let's see where we're at. So far today, I've ridden 147 miles. And let me, there's some sweat smeared here over the elevation gain, 12-3. It's about 12,300 feet of climbing. Grumpy's has burgers, and I really am jonesing for some fries and some salt and some pickles. Legs are feeling good. My spirits are feeling tremendous. The light's so dim, I don't feel like it's on. Having some issues with my dynamo switch. I think it's possibly from the crash earlier, having a little trouble powering my headlight. Anyway, could be worse, we'll figure it out. Even after eating like a pregnant woman at the smoky bar and examining my bike some more, I didn't notice any more damage. It wasn't until night fell and I couldn't get my light to work that I realized my dynamo wiring harness snapped in the crash. This means that even though my hub was generating power, I had no way of using it. So this means I had no handlebar light at all, no way of charging my cash batteries, my helmet light, my iPhone, my GoPro batteries, or anything while I was riding. Yes, it's a bit of a bummer, but that's why we have backup plans and it worked out fine. At night, I rode with just my helmet light on a low power setting to conserve battery. Yeah, it slowed me down a bit here and there, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I minimized filming to save my camera batteries, and anytime I got near an outlet while eating a meal, I charged my helmet light and my cash batteries. Let's get a mask. Hey, how's your team? Can I get two hamburgers? One for here with cheese, one to go, no cheese. The one to go, can I get no mayo? Can I get it wrapped in tinfoil? Yes, fries for both. Does it come with pickles? Lettuce, tomato, onion, and sauce. Do you have pickles? I'll add pickles to both of them. And I'll get a Coke. Do you have any ice cream or anything like that? Nope, okay. Thank you so much. I rode out of Ketchum at dusk and started a super fun 10 mile section of single track. Luckily I was really familiar with this section of the route, so it was easy for me to navigate even at night with my dim headlight. Usually I carry a battery powered flashlight as a backup, but on this ride, since I was trying to go so minimal, I left it at home. Anywho, I was starting to get really cold and tired on the Harriman Trail when I saw a vault toilet that looked really inviting. I took a quick nap in this pit toilet. Slept from 10.30 to 11.30. Ooh, that echo's crazy. Out of the weather, nice and clean. Now we're gonna go brave the elements and keep riding through the night. 
Not much to film in the dark. The final 15 miles in the Harriman, I had a much slower pace. My fingers and toes started to get numb, and I was ready for some real sleep. I was prepared to be semi-comfy in the 30s, but I was a bit undergun for the high 20 degree temps I was experiencing at this point in the ride. I decided to stop and catch some Z's at Galena Lodge. I knew they had an exterior outlet that I could use to charge my light while I slept, so that was my primary motivation. I also met a super cool single speeder named Dan while I was at Grumpy's. He said he was gonna bivy at the lodge as well, and I wound up under a picnic table near him. My legs were very happy to get a nice rest before tackling the grueling Titus Lake climb in the morning. Okay, good morning. <laughs> I've been uh, riding slash hiking for about an hour now. It's almost 8 a.m. I'm on the Titus Creek Trail, notorious for being a horse trail, hike a bike, especially with a loaded bike and all these miles in your legs. But the sun just started touching me. It was like in the 20s last night. Froze my balls off sleeping under a bench at Galena Lodge next to this dude named Dan. Normally I wouldn't have slept as long, or I didn't really sleep, I just shivered in my sleeping bag, but for about five hours, ushered the courage to pop out around 6.30 and get moving, get this day going. So here we are, still smiling, loving life, it's so beautiful here, almost to the lake and then up and over and down into the valley of the river of no return headwaters. Lots of work to do today, looking forward to it. Yeah, a little out of it. <laughs> I made it to Titus Lake, figure this is where I'm gonna eat some breakfast. I've got this hamburger that I swooped from uh, Grumpy's yesterday. That's breakfast of champions right there. Extra pickles. Finally went over the top of Galena Summit, and here's what I get for my hard work. Boom! First look at the sawtooth. Oh yeah, you can't beat it. Okay, quick check-in. I'm climbing up Fisher Creek. Uh, this is an 1,100 foot climb over like six and a half miles. Not too crazy, but at this point in the race, you're feeling everything. It is 11.30 in the morning. I've ridden around 216 miles and climbed around 19,000 feet. Feeling good. I've got just enough snacks left, hopefully, to get me to Redfish Lake. I'm probably gonna have to filter water up here. I don't think I have enough. Just reapplied sunscreen, chapstick. Yeah, just trying to make sure I keep eating and drinking, not bonking. All right, I'm at the top of the Fisher Creek climb. Eating some Sour Patch Kids. This is some of the best single track in Idaho. Some people even have it on their top 10 lists for the country. I'm not joking, look it up. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I have a whole video devoted to it. All right, filter up some water. Nothing like the fresh creek water. Unplug you, cover you, roll you, cap you, hair tie you. It took a lot longer than I anticipated to make it to the newly added Redfish Ridge single track. There was plenty of hike a bike over down trees and lots of energy expended over baby heads and technical single track. It felt like forever before I finally landed at Redfish Lake. On a bike ride? Yeah, how'd you guess? I don't know. <laughs> Just really lucky today. So are you road biking it or mountain biking? Mountain biking, okay. yeah. Well, thank you so much. After downing a Snapple, a Coke, a Big Stick, and a Choco Taco, I begrudgingly pulled myself away from the comfy bench out front of the general store. A little more hike-a-bike and slow going on the Alpine Way Trail eventually gave way to pavement, and I finally arrived in the town of Stanley. I'm beat, I'm tired, but I'm smiling. I need to get out and keep riding. I think I'm gonna roll out of here with Dan. We ride kind of the same pace. We've been getting murdered today on crazy hike a bike, all kinds of techie baby head single track for a big chunk of the day today. So I'm hoping for some easy gravel miles now, but nothing comes easy. Just got some resupplies, just stuffed my belly. Got a turkey avocado sandwich for later tonight and tomorrow morning maybe. Sunny's ready, let's do it. So 
some sweet Elk Mountain single track. What a way to spend last night. The sky was dark and full of stars when Dan and I eventually crept our way over Cape Horn Summit. We had the lofty goal of making it to Deadwood Reservoir and camping just before the West Side Trail. Not quite. For some reason we thought it would get warmer as we lost elevation, but instead we were hit with a bone chilling inversion during the high speed descent. It was even colder than the previous night at Galena Lodge. Our pace slowed considerably, we couldn't thaw our bodies out, and we came across a beautiful his and her pit toilet. It was only 11.30 at night and we were still 20 miles away from our goal, but we decided it was better to warm up and get some good sleep and hit it hard in the morning. Another pit toilet wake up call, hopefully the last one. 120 miles to go. We were on the move at 5.15 a.m. and made up some lost time with some fast pre-dawn miles. We were still chilled to the bone, but at least we knew the sun would be coming up soon. All right, what's the update? It's 9.02 in the a.m. and we've gone 326 miles. But look at this, this is a Deadwood Reservoir. We're on the West Sider Trail. Dan is leading the way. Look at this, views out of control. Worth a little bit of hike a bike, I'd say. All right, to the grind we go. I didn't film at all on the Scott Mountain climb or the endless ups and downs of Mordor. I was running low on GoPro batteries and wanted to make sure I had enough juice to film the finish. Quite frankly, I didn't feel like filming anyway. I knew I still had to conquer 14K of climbing before reaching the finish line, so I just wanted to concentrate on doing the work and making sure I was in the right mindset for success. The foot-long Subway sandwich in Garden Valley hit the spot, and the 88 degree temps of the afternoon had me jonesing for the hypothermic temps of the morning. Funny how that works. We just got here just in time. The flags are coming down. We traveled just to come here to your store. <laughs> Well, so stoked you were open. <laughs> we traveled the long way through uh, 380 miles. Yeah, last day, this year says it's, it's a race and I'm feeling miserably. <laughs> so we're here in Placerville, last pit stop before the finish line, mile 385 or so. And we have about 40 miles to go to the finish line. <laughs> I'm just zonked, man. Whooped. So Whooped, but look at those socks. Beautiful light though. Whoa, we're at the top of Harris Creek. That climb was a doozer. Sandy, we're tired. 35,000 foot of climbing already in the legs. My leg warm coolers won't even stay up anymore. They flop because my legs got so skinny. But look at this, trail magic. Oh! and a trash can to throw my trash. Shortly after this, we were treated to a magical sunset and some carefree miles along the Boise Ridge. That didn't last long, and we slowly made our way into Bogus Basin for the final grueling miles of single track in the dark. I was quite happy to ride behind Dan through this whole section. One of my favorite sayings is draft off the intelligence of others. And Dan knew these trails like the back of his hand. Being able to mooch off his bright lights and follow his line was an added bonus. Look, I'm sure the newly added Mahalo Trail would be fantastic on a full suspension bike in the middle of the day, but at night when you're depleted and you just want to get to the finish line, after being teased by the glowing city lights of Boise for what seemed like forever, we finally dropped into town. We're rolling in to the finish of the smoke and fire for like 39 or something like that this year. Lots of bonus mileage. I don't even know what I'm saying, but my teeth are pretty dirty. Smiling still. Got beat up today, but it's okay because we're about to roll across the finish line. It's just up ahead. It was an adventure. It was an experience. Achieved the goals. Saw all the pretty stuff, met a lot of cool people, came in under three days. All right, here comes the finish line. Can you see it? There's a huge fanfare up ahead. They're gonna come rushing out any second. They're hiding behind the backhand. They're hiding behind the dumpsters. We're rolling in to Hyde Park. There's the Sinclair dinosaur. Here it comes. Uh-oh. Whoa, Dan's got a mafia. You can do it! Just like that, this adventure's over. Looking forward to the next one. Uh, let me give you one quick look at my Garmin real quick. 435 miles, 
39,500 feet. <gasps> Thanks for tuning in to Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. Today's office is the whole enchilada in beautiful Moab, Utah. This is a shuttle ride that every mountain biker needs to do in their lifetime. Put it on your bucket list. Here we go. The shuttle ride up from Moab takes over an hour, weaving its way up into the daunting LaSalle Mountains and dropping you off at the Geyser Pass Trailhead at 10,500 feet. From there, you grab your bike, cross your fingers that you didn't forget anything, and watch the band leave. No turning back on this one. And we are off. The start of the whole enchilada. Ooh, that sun feels good. Fantastic. The Geyser Pass Trailhead is snow covered and closed for a majority of the year. So if you're lucky enough to get it, you've got to embrace what comes next. After a quick warm up and descending some flowy single track in the gorgeous morning light, it's time to shed some layers for a grueling climb up to Burrow Pass, which is the high point for the ride. This takes you to the top of the tree line at 11,150 feet, and with the big climb out of the way, it's time for a short breather and a sip of water. Soak in the alpine views of the Manti LaSalle National Forest, that's when the real ride begins. All right, big climb is out of the way. Now we start some descending off the back of Burrow Pass. Off the back of Burrow Pass, you hit some of the steepest, narrowest, rooty, and rocky technical terrain of the whole ride as you drop through evergreen forests and meander along the creek. It's a little tougher than I remember. Definitely. Note to self, have a dropper post next time. I think it's about time I invest in one for Dolphina. After reaching Burrow Pass, the enchilada descends over 8,000 feet in the next 25 miles or so. Eventually, you're deposited on the bike path for a relaxing cruise along the Colorado River and back into town. This part of the enchilada is extra saucy. <laughs> Once that's out of the way, there are a few more distinct sections of the route. You hit Hazard County before a short stint on the Cocapelli Trail, which takes you to UPS and LPS, upper and lower Porcupine single track, before the final 11 miles along the Porcupine Rim. Looks like I just missed all the fall colors. The leaves have already fallen. The last time I rode here was just as the leaves were turning. This time I just missed it. But the aspens are still gorgeous. This is still a beautiful section before Hazard County.
Marco Capelli! Look at those views! What? <laughs> Gotta follow the wee signs! Keep going! This ride is fantastic so far. The weather's perfect. Couldn't ask for anything better. So peaceful. Yeah, I wish you were here to join me. Kinda. Such an interesting mix. Slick rock with all this orange sand. You really don't find this too many other places except Moab. Oh, cacti. The ride is truly magical as it guides you through ever-changing ecosystems and challenges you with every type of riding terrain that Moab has to offer. Alpine passes, wooded forests, stream crossings, aspen groves, black hummus dirt, red slick rock, deserts, you name it. The landscape is constantly changing along with the riding terrain and it's capped off with mind-blowing views around every turn. Some exposure. <laughs> Woo. There's plenty of climbing sprinkled in throughout, and you'll wind up gaining around 1,500 feet. This is traditional Moab riding, so the descending often time requires plenty of effort and is slow going as you navigate through mazes of slick rock bliss. But that's part of the lore. This is my lunch spot. My chocolate burrito from Gilberto's. Boom. <laughs> Smiles for miles. Wee wee wee. Although the whole enchilada was first envisioned and ridden as a masochistic loop from town, pretty much everyone tackles it as a point to point, cutting out the pavement approach. It's one of the most highly touted rides in the world, and according to recently installed Forest Service trail counters, over 30,000 riders tackle it each year. The whole enchilada became an officially designated route by the U.S. Forest Service in 2009. It's mostly well signed with WE placards throughout, which makes navigating pretty easy. Whoa, look at that. First glance at the Colorado River down there. Whoa. Don't take your eyes off the trail though. <laughs> yes. Woo. Wow. That drop off into the gorge is ridiculous.
just because the dirt is in it doesn't mean the beauty has. Look how gorgeous this bike path is. And just like that, this adventure is over. Thanks for hanging out to the end. If you haven't done the whole enchilada yet, put it on your bucket list. Even if you have, do it again. I'm at the Whitefish Bike Retreat in beautiful Whitefish, Montana, getting ready to go up to the start of the Great Divide Mountain Bike Classic Race, along with the B2B Tour Divide Border to Border that's happening this year because of COVID and the Border to Canada not being open. This is an amazing opportunity to meet some new friends, hang out with some old friends, and just suck in all the beautiful energy from all these adventurous spirits. I'm gonna film the rollout and then I'm gonna ride back to Whitefish along the first couple of passes, about 120 miles, along with the racers and show you a little bit of this amazing course and hopefully get your juices flowing to see the rest of it and go ride it yourself. Let's go. Go get some. And I'm spent. <laughs> Dude, I love your energy. <laughs> right on, Good brother. Pretty awesome. See you soon. Red Meadow Lake in all its glory. Yeah.
just like that, this adventure is over. I descended into Whitefish, grubbed at 2nd Street Pizza, and cruised back to my truck at the bike retreat. But the racers continue their journey over another 2,300 miles to Mexico, and I wish them all safe travels chock full of lifelong memories. I put links in the description if you want to follow the riders on track leaders or learn more about the Great Divide mountain biking route and the Tour Divide. I hope this gave you guys a tiny glimpse into the magic of divide riding. Whether you choose to tackle it in chunks, tour it, or race it, it's an experience you'll not soon forget. Beautiful morning, it's about 55 degrees, 7.01 a.m. Already almost making wrong turns. All right, made it to the Slim Shady Trail. Here's the start. Gotta get warmed up for this. All right, my breath is starting to calm down. Starting to find a little bit of a rhythm. It's gonna be a big day in the saddle, about 53 miles. 6,000 feet of Arizona chunky up and down desert climbing, slow going. For anybody that hasn't ridden in Sedona or just in Arizona in general, 53 miles might not seem like much, but trust me, it is. <laughs> the miles are slow and you're fighting for them. I think the big freaking loop is the best way to touch the best Sedona has to offer in a one day, super duper fun, epic ride. Pretty soon, the Slim Shady Trail will give way to Highline, one of the bigger climbs. Hey, what's going on, brother? Oh, so good, right? Yeah. Ooh, pedal strike. Better start paying attention. Wait for it. It's out of the trees. All right, just made the turn off for Highline. Starting to climb. Gotta remember it's a long day, not to Burn myself out too hard, but also not dilly dally too much either. Beautiful sun rising out to the east. This is the Highline Trail. A little bit of exposure here, the beautiful kind that I don't mind. Oh, yeah. Check it out. We're gonna be riding all around the horn today. Woo! Nice. Wow. This is gorgeous. I've only done this ride once before and it was counterclock when I did it. This time I'm doing it clockwise, which is how they're doing it this year. All right, all right, got caught, not paying attention. <laughs> okay, let's regroup. I feel okay. Let's check on the bicycle. Let's wipe you off. Rear wheel, good. Front wheel, good. <sighs> Headset, bars are straight. Might as well drink some water. <sighs> all right, body's good. Bike's good, mine's good. Proceed with adventurous spirit. It's a great way to start getting my riding chops back after being off a bike for almost a month. Gotta remember how to ride rocks in tech. Thrown into the fire here. Wow, so gorgeous. All I wanna do is stare off the trail. Now we start descending Highline. Just off for a morning cruise. Endorphins are starting to pump. I'm about half hour into this ride. Just stoked. Me, myself, and I out here. All right, so I made it to the Baldwin Trail now. Just realized that when I crashed early on, I lost the bottle of vitamin water that was in my jersey pocket. That means I'm just gonna have to conserve liquids a little bit. I'm more bummed that I left a plastic bottle on the trail. Good thing I have a GPS track. This would be impossible to follow. So beautiful here, right? So we got a little bit of a creek crossing. Let's get these feet wet, huh? All right. 
Not too bad. Just shoved a couple chomps in my mouth on the ridge trail. A little bit of hiker bike to get up here. But now this trail's riding fun. Did I tell you I'm out here for the FKT? Funnest known time, yup. I'm going for it. See how much fun I can have today. And I just lost the trail. This trail is called Secret Single Track. Pretty awesome little slick rock. Single track carved into the earth here. Surrounded by lava rock. Super cool. Transitioning to the sketch trail. So far not living up to its namesake. Definitely not as sketchy as Highline, but I hope I'm not speaking too soon. This is a little bit of a rest from the techie stuff of earlier, so I'll take it. Gotta enjoy the fast miles when they come. Oh, look at those views. Look at that. So nice. All the different colors. Got the green and lush, contrasted by the red. Come on, does it get any better? All right, just had to switch the battery in my GoPro. I'm at approximately mile nine on Carroll Canyon. I've been going about an hour and a half. Figured I'd take a little break. Woo Dude, this macadamia nut butter, the jam. All right, transitioned to the old post trail. Starting to see more trail runners out now. Got to keep my wits about me. Okay, big climb. Oh, thank you so much. Just me. Have a great day. So I can tell that I slightly bent my derailleur hanger when I took that digger earlier. Nothing too bad, but when I get in my granny gear, it won't stay. If it gets worse, I'll give it a shot trying to straighten it. And I also have spare with me just in case. Oh, hello. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Just made a big deposit in the climbing bank. Hopefully we'll get some long-term dividend payments coming through here. Now we're talking. Oh yeah, that wind feels good. Pull me down. Take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Gosh, this is so magical. Who'd have thought, right? Just jumping on this two-wheeled apparatus. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. You shake my nerves and you ran on my way. So I've only made a couple wrong turns so far. Not too bad. Caught them pretty quick. Again, if you don't have GPS for this ride, especially if you're an out-of-towner, you will get lost. So many ways to make one little mistake. So I'm about exactly two hours in, exactly at mile 14, only averaging about seven miles an hour. Yeah, it is what it is. Hi, just me. Thank you so much. Oops, sorry about that. And turning off onto Remnant. Tuesday morning with Maury. Is that how the book goes? Tuesdays with Maury? Oh. Oh. Yeah, you definitely earn it on Remnant. No freebies here. Okie dokie, we've transitioned to Gerdner Trail now. It's been Babyhead City for a little bit. Howdy. Hello. Have a good one, brother. All right, I've turned onto the Axis Trail. Starting to get some payback for a lot of the climbing I've just done. Kind of keeps you fresh on this route. You never really get too, too fatigued because after some punchy, tough climbing, your heart rate's elevated. You get some respite. The honeymoon phase of the ride is officially over. I'm still smiling, but I'm working. Earning it two and a half hours in right now. Feeling good, but definitely it's on. It's starting to be work but fun work nonetheless. Oh, whoa, whoa, look at these views. Just opened up on me out of nowhere. So blessed to be out here today. Blessed that you're hanging out with me. Thanks for watching as always. I appreciate you enjoying the journey with me 
And hopefully this adds a little stoke to your mountain bike and fire and gets you to think about coming out to Sedona if you haven't, or just hitting the trails near your house or wherever you can get out riding. All right, reached the junction with Coxcomb. Another good milestone on the ride. It's so cool when you're riding on the mountains that you were just looking at from afar not too long ago. And now you're like right in the mix, like it's 1986. Coming on the backside of these monoliths that I was looking at earlier from afar. Now I'm right in them. Pretty special out here. Definitely recommend getting up here. Even if you don't do the big loop, put this on your list. The trail I was actually just on is ground control. Ground control to Major Tom. I don't know the rest of the song. Outer Limits Trail. I really dig all the spacey themed trail names out here. Had to change another GoPro battery. I'm about three and a half hours in, right around the halfway point in mileage. Um, I'm gonna try to just keep taking breaks when I need to change batteries. Yeah, still have plenty of food left. I'm about halfway through my water as well, so. How's it going? Good. Beautiful day. Gorgeous day. All right, let's get back at it. Airy Trail, one of my favorites. I remember this from last time. It's just as fun going the other direction. Sorry about my brakes. Obviously getting dirty and loud. Whoa, look at this. Natural wall ride. So good. Climbing up Dead Man's Pass, I think, for the first time. My left leg is starting to yell at me. It's threatening a little bit of cramping. As well as my left arm, interestingly enough. My forearm. Soft pedaling for a little bit until that subsides. Um, but other than that, physically feeling fantastic still. Off the couch pretty much. Uh, before this ride, I hadn't ridden my bike for 25 days. Took a couple rides last week, just short rides to start getting back on the bike. This is pretty much my first real ride in a month. So I'm pretty stoked for how I'm feeling. Oh, crowded here. Hello. Have a great day. I think it's just me. And more views opening up. Get out of town. Mescal. Howdy. <laughs> How's it going? So Mescal must be pretty popular trail. This is insane, beautiful. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Just me, have a good one. Stock level high, coming up on four hours on trail. Loving Mescal. This has been the longest extended, kind of flat to gradual descent that I've had the whole ride. So much fun. Just transitioned to chuck wagon. Chuck wagon's legit. A lot of climbing, a lot of descending. One of the longer trails on the ride. Super fun though. Still feeling good, but fatigue is definitely starting to set in. As expected, Chimney Rock, 12.03. Five hours, two minutes in. Just stopped for a little break, ate a little food, put a little sunblock on, back at it. Turning onto Thunder Mountain. Here we go. Whew. Climbing teacup. It's hot. Fatigue setting in, but I am smiling. Okay. Nervous about going downhill so much. Only means one thing. I'm gonna have to head back up. Just transitioned onto Adobe Jack Trail. I don't want to look at what mile it is. Still smiling. I feel like I have something in my teeth. Must be some chomps. Toby Jack's got some flizzle. Yo. Know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. You better hide your money. No snakes today so far. You ever see that movie Snakes on a Plane? Don't bother. Brewer Trail. One step closer. Just when you start saying, oh, I wish the end would come. Boom, they throw a trail like this in your face. 
with these views. Here's the pink Jeep tour my dad was talking about. All right, off the pavement, onto the Mystic Trail. Van Morrison will be proud. This is the Pigtail Trail. Eight miles to go. I've got about three quarters of a bottle of water left, plenty of food. That's it for Pigtail. Now climbing Pecker. Made it to Broken Arrow. Woo. Okay, my legs are not wanting to talk to me right now. All right, transition to Little Horse Trail. Gotta say, Broken Arrow was a beast. Yes, just at the Llama Trail. One more closer to civilization. Starting to feel that finish line. I'm probably at about mile 49, I'm thinking. About four miles to go. No rock pathway. Oh, and I can see the highway getting close. My legs are done climbing. They're done, they're toast. Yes, here's the underpass. Oh, yes. Underpass. Underpass. I'm just a couple miles from the finish now. Just decided to cool my body down in the shade. Get some pistachios, get some salt in me. Uh, my legs are walking pretty hard. So I figured take one last break and then I'm looking forward to a Coke, a Gatorade, and an ice cream at the Circle K. That's what I'm fighting for. Cocasino Trail. About to hook back up with Slim Shady. Yes. That's the end of Slim Shady. And just like that, this adventure's over. Thanks for hanging out to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Yes, my car is still here. I don't have any energy to talk, man. It's over. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, 